We're continuing to work on our bow rockers. Let's get started. Well, good morning. Welcome back here to the shop where we're going to continue working on our two bow rockers for the Christmas orders that uh, I'm working on currently. So last week where we left off, we got our bows pretty well cut out. We made the boxes. We got everything glued and secured. And now it's time to go ahead and remove these clamps and take everything apart, go back over to the bandsaw and then start fine tuning everything. That means cutting our uh, cleats and getting those flush with the bows and just go through and start sanding everything. Um, at this point, it, there really isn't, believe it or not, much to do other than just get our belt sander out and start sanding the edges of our, of our bows and getting those again fine tuned and give everything a final sand. We've got our turnings. We'll go ahead and get uh, the material glued up for our, our four turnings, the two oak ones and our two cherry ones. So we'll get that done and we'll pull the lathe out, get those turned, and then build slats. And then our rockers are pretty well built. You know, I, I've said it before, and if you've ever wanted to build a set of these or, but were a little, little bit intimidated, I can understand that. But again, if you follow the kind of the direction and, and how I do it, it takes, you know, the intimidation factor out of it. And they really aren't that hard to build once you do a couple. And like I said, um, doing it the way I'm showing you, to me, I think it's just the easiest way to do them. So let's go ahead. I'll finish getting the clamps off and then we'll take our stretchers off and then we'll head over to the bandsaw. So I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about the clamps that I use here in the shop. Primarily, I use Jorgensen wood clamps. Um, these have been, you know, the go-to as far as clamps. And of course, Jorgensen was bought out a number of years ago, and I believe they're now manufactured in China, which is a real shame. So any chance I get, I attend auctions and I look on like Facebook Marketplace, eBay, things like that, and I try to find the old ones, the original ones, even the ones that are slightly beat up, you know, I just love because to me they're just broken in. But I did come across a company in Iowa that is manufacturing a really high quality wood clamp. So if any of you are interested in these, I'll put a link in the description uh, with these wood clamps. Uh, the name I believe is Miro or Miro Moose in Iowa. And again, I recommend them. Uh, they're not any sort of a you know, paid affiliate or anything like that. Because again, I'm a small, small channel here, a small guy. And uh, so I don't get any sort of kickback or anything. I'm just passing this on to you that if you are looking for a really well-built clamp, look into these guys. And again, I'll put a link in the description, but uh, real happy with these. And those of you that are interested, you know, my clamp wall back here, I built this myself 
and what this used to be the framework and everything that used, this used to be a bolt bin um, uh, stand and it had these oh they're kind of like these plastic bins that hung off of these and so I kind of took it and modified it I found it at a yard sale for I believe I paid 10 or 20 dollars for the frame and then I took some 2 by 8 and just kind of cut it fit perfectly in between uh, in between the rails and the way this little frame was built and I extended it and everything else but I modified it to fit this and it just works really really well I can put my bar clamps on one side you know and my wood clamps on this side and again it's on wheels I can kind of roll it around and push it out of the way but boy I'll tell you it works really really good and I'm pretty proud of that so okay well let's go ahead and let's get this one flipped upside down we'll get our stretchers taken off and see how we did and then we'll go over to the bandsaw and get these all trimmed up now another tip when you go to take your stretchers off of here I always mark make a mark so that I can line these all right back up so that this the stretcher goes right back into the same holes just a little little tip there I think I gave you that tip out there just so I can sort of rem, you know remind myself to do that again I get rolling on projects and I just get rolling in here and I forget to hit the record button or you know, I'm just not thinking Okay, there we go another little tip we can do is the marks that you made I always do like an A a B a number one number two I transfer that on the inside in here of our cleat because we're going to be sanding all of this and we'll just sand our mark away but on the inside of our cleat we're really not going to sand that we're not going to you know mess with that so that mark can stay there okay there's that one let's take the little cherry one apart okay let's head over to the bandsaw okay so our table on our bandsaw is still tilted at our 10 degrees so all we need to do is just run through here and just trim off the excess from our cleats and really that's all there is to it just have to set the depth again
Okay, that's all done. We got those cut. Now we can go ahead and we'll clamp these in our vise and I'll pull the uh, belt sander out and then we can start fine tuning these and giving them a good sand. And then we'll start gluing up our material for our turnings. I've gone ahead and I've clamped up one side of our bow rocker here and I'm ready to start belt sanding this. A belt sanding, usually belt sanding these, these bow rockers seems to be the easiest way again I found to, to do these. And it seems like it might be a lot of work to do that but honestly it really isn't. I'll probably spend maybe 15 minutes or side uh, belt sanding these and getting these pretty well prepped and ready to go. So it doesn't take long. 80 grit on my paper, or as far as paper goes, that's what I'm using uh, on my belt sander. And once we get these all belt sanded, then I'll throw them up on the bench and then use the palm sander. Again, I'll start with 80 grit and then go to 120 grit. And 120 is pretty well where I stop on all of my work, even the horses after I get them um, carved and roughed in and, you know, I start sanding. I'll, I'll I'll sand, I'll start with 60 grit, 80 grit, and then 120, and then pretty much they're ready to start primering at that point. But back here on the bow rockers, we got them clamped up, so let's go ahead and we'll start belt sanding these. And I'll try to get you in as close as I can here with some of the cameras and show you again how I'm doing this and what I'm doing. Really, it's just a matter of, you know, get at it. So let's, let's do it. Thank you. 
There we go. That one is pretty well done and that took about, it took right around 15 minutes or so to do this and to have this one done. So we'll go ahead. I like hanging them up here behind me on the clamp rack and we'll keep it out of the way. We'll do the second one. And of course, then the little cherry ones, then we'll just start sanding everything. But they're really not bad to build. So again, I would encourage you, if you ever thought about it, you know, do it. Uh, you know, give it a shot and do it. I guarantee you, you can do it. Now that our belt sanding is done, we can bring it over here. I pulled out my sanding pad or my sanding mat here and I have 80 grit in my palm sander. So now I'm just gonna start going over everything with uh, 80 grit, you know, smooth out. And especially on this cherry, this is, gonna this is gonna sand really, really quick. This won't take long at all. And then we'll switch over to 120. We'll give it a final sand and then we can start putting this all back together.
Okay, these are pretty well sanded. I've got them down to 120. And as far as the edges go, uh, the only thing I do on my edges is just kind of knock that, that edge off. I just knock it down. You saw me with the palm sander. I'll just quickly go over the edge with the palm sander, and then I can just go in by hand with 120 and just ease that, ease that edge over a little bit. And that again, that's personal preference. You could take a router with a, like a quarter inch roundover bit or something and knock that edge off. That's totally up to you. Uh, I think to me, personally, I think it looks great. Just, just knock that edge off and just ease it just a little bit. And that's really all I do to finish out my the bow rockers. Now that we have the sanding pretty well finished up on these little cherry rockers, we can go ahead so we can fit these and go ahead, get them glued permanent, get them screwed in there, and then we can go ahead and start assembling this. So let's go over, we can head over to the uh, joiner over there. I've got a little bit to take off. I'm gonna put a little bit of a bevel on the top part of our stretchers. So we get to use the new joiner again. I don't know about you, but I sure get excited when I get new tools in the shop. That joiner, it just puts a smile on my face every time I turn it on. Okay, we've got a little bevel on our stretchers here. I'm just looking for my mark, there it is. So let's go ahead, we'll put a little bit of glue on these and let's assemble these. It's a little bit tricky putting this other side on. go there's our little set of cherry bow rockers pretty well finished um, all that's left to do now is do our two little turnings and put the slats down and you know this is done so I'll go ahead pull these oak ones over now and do the same thing get it all put together um, I do want to bring you over here though and show you again uh, you know, when you build the box and when you do it the way I tell you to assemble it or I'm showing you how to assemble it, you know, it, it, you come out nice and even. Maybe I can do it this way and you can see, 
you know, what I'm looking at is here and lining it up down at the end and just seeing if these are, you know, really, you know, close. And they are, this might help you here. You know, we are, we are very, very close to being, you know, perfectly horizontal. And some of this, when we go to put our turning in, we can move it just a little bit and that turning will help hold it in place if you're low on one, you know, one side and maybe high or so. You can just adjust that turning just a little bit, but we are really, really close. But that's a nice little set of rockers and that's gonna make some child really, really happy. Let's do the oak ones. Well, there we go. I finished getting everything sanded. You know, of course, put our stretchers on, got everything put back together. You know, again, when you do it this way, when you build the box separately, then you attach it to these bows, you know, it all goes right back together exactly, you know, the way it should. And this one, again, just looks great. Everything's nice and flush. I'll bring you over. I'll take you off the tripod and bring you over here so you can see it. It's just absolutely dead on. It looks great. And let's try it out here. There we go. Well, tomorrow we get here to the shop, then we're going to pull the lathe out and we'll, uh, we'll get our turnings turned and we'll start making the slats and we can pretty well get these finished up tomorrow. Okay, just wanted to bring you over to the bench here so that you can see what I'm seeing. So again, everything looks good from here to here and down at the other end. So these are all pretty well, you know, ready to, ready to go. Everything's sanded. And then I went ahead and glued up material for the two turnings. I have a nice piece of cherry that's already ready to go and I glued up a nice piece of oak. So we'll be able to come back tomorrow and, you know, get that all planed down, get that material ready to go and put it on the lathe and get our turnings done. There we go. It's a new day here in the shop and yesterday we pretty much spent the entire day sanding on our two bow rockers and then reassembling them. Today the focus is going to be on turning. So I'm going to go ahead and get the lathe pulled out here and get that set up. Before I left the shop last night, I went ahead and I glued up material for our two end turnings. And I also had a piece of cherry here that'll be perfect for uh, our little cherry bow rocker. So I've got this all planed and joined so it's ready to go. I even marked out with my compass the circumference on the ends. So the only thing left to do now is head over to the table saw. I want to knock these corners off on these blanks. It makes it a lot easier when you go to put the, uh, the blank on the lathe and turn it when these corners are knocked off. So let's head over to the table saw and we'll get that done. Now I went ahead and adjusted the fence here and I've tilted my blade to a 45 degree angle so that's ready to go. So all there is to do is just run these through the saw.
So I have our lathe pulled out here and I've got our blank chucked up. It's 20 inches long, which is plenty long for what I need to make both of my turnings. I'll go ahead and get both of them out of here. Uh, I've got everything ready to go. I've got my tools pulled out. I've got my music ready to go here. So all it's left to do is just, you know, start turning. Let's do it.
So there we go. We've got our two turnings all done. We have our little cherry one and our oak turnings ready to go. I'm not going to cut these apart just yet and install them. I'm going to wait until we get our horse made and get it put up here because then I'm going to notch those hooves to fit this. And there are times where I've got a little bit of a gap and I can add a little bit of pressure back here to these bows. And I can do that by cutting these a little bit long and fitting them in just to add a little bit of pressure. So we're going to hold off on doing that. But for the most part, these are pretty well finished. All we have to do is put our slats down and give this all a final sand. And these bow rockers are pretty well done. But unfortunately, I'm going to cut this video a bit short uh, this time around because I've got some family obligations coming up. So I'm going to have to take off a little bit early. We're heading down to Kentucky for a long weekend and we'll be back here to the shop next week so don't worry when we get in here though what i want to start on is we've got that medium safety stand we need to start you know getting some material down and start building that so that'll be next week and then i also want to start putting some horses together uh, i've got a medium a couple of mediums we'll put a medium on bows and a medium on a safety stand we'll start getting that um, you know put together and i'll show you again how to do that and i've got that large base here too so we might as well start putting a large horse together too again i always like to try to work ahead as much as i can so that will all be next week but again i really appreciate you watching and if you're getting something out of these videos please give it a thumbs up and also think about subscribing and hit the bell so that you're notified whenever i post a new video you can check me out on instagram and pinterest at greenfield woodworks and i have a facebook page of course greenfield woodworks and I have an Etsy storefront too, Greenfield Woodworks. Again, I really appreciate everyone that has commented and emailed me about the name change that will be coming. Um, so look for that. I'm gonna have to build uh, you know, a new intro, so there's a little bit of work before I can just you know, go and just change the name. But that will be coming up, so I really appreciate all the, uh, all the comments and encouragement about changing the name. Really, really, I appreciate that. Well, that's all for me, so we'll see you here in the shop next week.